Hey, 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 Andrew here from The Investor's Way and welcome to Woody's Weekly Wisdom, episode number 49. After a short break, uh, having enjoyed some time in Thailand, it's back to making weekly wisdom videos for you. And this week, we're looking at something pretty interesting uh, and maybe a little bit um, expected, I guess we could say, uh, in terms of what's going on in the market. But let's have a look at this headline. Let's try and get rid of some of this garbage uh, advertising. But building approvals disappoint. And uh, through fe February, as apartment and unit permits slump to 12-year low. So it talks about Australia's chronic housing shortage uh, showed no sign of abating through February with just 12,520 new homes signed off for construction. So pretty much what does that mean? What does that mean for you as an investor when you see something like this and you see that the building approvals are down uh, and they're softer than anticipated, they're less than they were 12 months ago, they're worse they've been in a while, what does all that mean? So let's delve in and have a look and see what the article says. And then let's have a look at what really uh, we can take from this, this story without necessarily having to read it yourself. So it's not surprising that um, building approvals are pretty sluggish at the moment. You know, you've only got to turn on the TV or um, you know, any social media feed and you will find, about, or, you know, find a lot out about the uh, cost of living crisis, the inflation, the interest rates, all that type of stuff. I mean, we on these weekly wisdoms, we've talked about those topics, uh, it seems almost like on every episode. So it's a common theme that we're hearing out there. And as a result, that is impacting people's confidence. And as a result, it's also impacting people's ability to um, spend on something like a new build. And on top of all of that, with all of the inflation crunch coming uh, and high interest rates coming off the back of a period of time that was very tough for the construction industry. So, you know, post the pandemic, very, you know, the pandemic itself, very tough on the construction industry. And then post that pandemic, we then go into this hyper inflation and uh, rapid increases in interest rates. And as a result, we're seeing a significant number of uh, builders going out of business. So I heard earlier today that um, we used to have 3,000 know, construction companies in Australia and we're down to about 1,500. Uh, I don't know if those statistics are accurate, but if they are, it's a very telling sign as to why uh, there is a, a, a reduction in the number of dwellings being built. And so here it talks about... Um, that you know, from the previous month, the dwelling approvals dropped uh, by 1.9% uh, to the 12,520. Uh, and that's far weaker than the 3% increase anticipated by economists. So almost a 5% swing between what they were expecting and what actually happened. Uh, and, you know, and then there's the caveat that these things can be quite volatile and subject to amendment and uh, that it was the worst it's been since March 2021. You know, plunging more than 45%. So all of that is the, the hyperbole. It's the you know, clickbait type stuff to get you reading further. Then we go in and have a look at more of the data that talks about uh, 162,000 odd new homes received sign off in the last uh, 12 months to February. And that's the lowest annual result since March, 2013. So that's, that's a decade. And uh, that is obviously you know, alarming or informative if you want to take a, a, an investor's approach to this rather than, a, I guess, a media approach. It's, uh, it's an opportunity. And uh, it's off the backdrop now. So we're saying, look, we've got 162,000 homes being approved for build in the last 12 months, but we also had 618,000 people um, migrate into Australia. And they've all got to live somewhere. And if you do the simple math and say that the average home is 2.2 uh, people, 162 homes is, you know, at 2.2 is roughly 300,000. Uh, it's not going to house the 618,000 people. So they've got to find somewhere to live. And that is really where the, the real story here is all about. So let's just, uh, before I uh, finish up on that point, let's come back 
and just complete the article first. Um, you know, the population growth has put pressure on rents and dwelling prices. So we've seen that. We've talked about that on these weekly wisdom videos. And we know also through, if you've been listening to these videos, you'll know that with rents going up and the cost of building going up, that's having a, uh, a big impact on inflation. And with the Reserve Bank trying to um, tame inflation, like it says here, it's trying to tame it. With those two things working against it, even with interest rates going up, it's now becoming this self-fulfilling prophecy. The more you put interest rates up, the more rents have got to go up because landlords have got to recover their costs, uh, which you know, just builds into this uh, self-fulfilling inflation thing, which is why I always say it's a very um, you know, difficult tool or stick for the uh, the government and the Reserve Bank to be using to curtail our spending because it becomes self-fulfilling in the end. So at the moment, we're seeing all of that play out. You've got lots of lots of pressures. And this graph really does show you, you know, the, the disparity between uh, the population growth and the massive surge that we've seen versus, you know, the drop in the dwellings. And that gap is uh, is far wider than it's been for a long, long time. And so that is going to put pressure on rents. It's going to put pressure on uh, house prices and it's, it's going to probably end in a little bit of pain uh, for the people that can least afford that pain. And so we've seen all that in the, in the graph. Uh, we can see that uh, even uh, units, apartments, townhouses, their approvals dr dived by 24.9%. So that's, um, that's quite a dramatic fall in the number of units being built, again, because of the you know, the, the construction company struggling to meet the costs and make, you know, the building of these uh, apartment apartment um, lots um, viable for them. And so that's uh, really, uh, again, you know, putting uh, a lot of pressure on you know, the number of available homes for either rent or to buy for not just existing people in Australia, but also those people migrating here. And so with all of that, you know, you've got capacity constraints, like I've just said. And so what is it from this weekly wisdom that you can take when you see this type of data? And the simple fact is that what we're seeing here is a lot of pressure on the housing market and therefore the supply side of things with an increase in the demand side, and that is only going to push property prices higher. So if you're an investor and you have capacity, then you know, now, uh, as is always, but now in particular is going to be a time where it is great to be investing in property. Now, I can tell you from um, experience with my clients right now, it is very evident that there is a lot of people out there looking to buy properties because even the investors who in, within my client base who are out there looking to buy are finding it very hard to get a property because of the amount of competition. So uh, there's a one just this week gone over in South Australia where um, there were 16 offers before my client was even able to, to put their offer in, which would have been the 17th offer. So uh, clearly this is being seen on the ground, even by investors going in and looking to try and add to their portfolio and finding it difficult because of the amount of competition, because of the lack of supply. So that's going to end in pain for some people as well. Eventually, there's people who are going to find themselves in a position where, you know, they they have they drop out of the market because they just can't get a property, and uh, they'll obviously uh, try and then either rent, or it might see less and less people selling because they're not able to you know, sell and then get into the next property because of that competition. So that will turn people off selling and that will put more pressure on the supply side of things. And, uh, you know, as I said, it will end in pain. But as an investor, what you need to take from this is that because you don't have that that problem of finding a new dwelling for your own purposes, you're doing it to provide accommodation for somebody else. Um, you can take the time to find the right property, um, you know, win Win the, um, the bid, uh, don't get into a bidding war, but certainly you know, make smart applications of um, pricing that you think would work 
and take advantage of the fact that now is a great time to get set if you have the capacity. Now, the final thing on this article that um, is very contrary to what I've been hearing in the market, uh, talking about how uh, they they very much expect the Reserve Bank to um, sit on interest rates um, next month, or sorry, this month, which I think uh, was pretty obviously going to happen. Um, they're now saying, well, maybe, maybe um, in May they'll sit on their hands again, but then in September, yeah, they might um, might start easing rates. That's not necessarily what I'm hearing, but it'll be interesting to see if it does happen uh, in um, you know with a couple of months more of data to to determine what's going on. Because at the moment, the inflation battle is not being won. It's been certainly brought back to levels that are far more manageable but it's still not at a level that they want it to be. And um, we're seeing all these other pressures that are putting um, an enormous amount of stress on this whole economic climate. And as a result, I think it's going to be hard for them to reduce rates in the short term, but let's hope they do. Let's hope we get some some, uh, relief and uh, we we can see more and more people um, trying to get into the market and, uh, and grow their wealth. So, that's um, that's a bit of a summary. As I said, it's uh, the property market once again looking very very strong in the near term, uh, particularly for investors. You can take advantage of this information that uh, there's not enough properties being built, so get out there and snap up what you can, get it into your portfolio because there's just a general shortage of supply. And while there's a shortage of supply, that always means capital growth. All right, so that's Woody's Weekly Wisdom, episode number 49. A huge favour to ask of you. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the little bell to get notified when these come out. Smash the subscribe button so you can get them straight into your inbox. And if you're watching on Facebook or LinkedIn, hit the like and the comment button and uh, let us know what you thought of uh, this episode. And don't be afraid to share it as well and just get more and more people to learn how to take control of their financial futures. Have a great week. We'll see you again next week. Cheers.